Hey there. Have you made a conscious decision about the colors that you love, that you're, the colors that you're drawn to, the brights, the darks, the muted, the um, unmuted? <laughs> hey, I, the reason I bring this up is I have struggled always because I follow all these artists and they use a color palette that I think is just beautiful and it's theirs, it's their own unique color palette. But I never really took the time to figure out what my color palette was. I knew what I liked, but I just thought in order to make great art or good art or even bad art, that I needed to, you know, kind of copy what they were doing or use the same colors that they were, that they were using. So I, I came up with a little um, idea recently. It's not a new idea, people do it all the time, swatching out colors, but I thought I'm gonna go through all my supplies and just start swatching out the colors in order to see which colors I actually like, which things I don't like. And maybe you're also a little bit like me where you like buying the art supplies, but then when it comes to actually using them, well, you know, they sit in a drawer or they, the box isn't even opened, or maybe you use them once and then you didn't use them again. So today I have an idea for you just to go through, choose one of your art supplies, maybe something that you haven't used in a while. Maybe it's a set of markers or colored pencils or paint or whatever, and then um, swatch it out each color and then you know then you're gonna have a real visual on one what the color looks like when it's actually put down on um, paper or cardboard or you know garbage sack or whatever you substrate you use and then two how it works how it moves how it feels is it something you even like is it something that you want to continue using I know I um, show you some examples I'm going to show you some examples and wow a lot of the colors that I had bought in previous you know, before I kind of figured out that I like more of a muted color palette, were bright and colors that I would never reach for now. Now, that being said, I, I've kind of learned along the way that I can mix colors together and, and dull them down, or I do like a bright, maybe underpainting that I can then paint over, and then there's little pops of, you know, red or pink that might pop through. Um, but, you know, I think the idea is is to find your you know what you're drawn to what your color palette is because it's going to be completely unique from what my color palette is so today i'm going to walk you through a little exercise on just swatching out i'm going to swatch out um a dry medium and then you know add a little water to it and just kind of show you how i do it and give you some examples of ways that i've done it in with using other mediums so i hope that you'll um you know Try this and go find an, uh, a, you know, an art material that you haven't used in a while and swatch it out and then spend some time thinking about, hey, what are the colors that I'm drawn to? What, would, what do I want my color palette to be? Before we get going on the color swatching, I thought I'd show you some examples of color swatching that I've done in um, old books that I have turned into uh, you know, art journals and also art journals. So here's a few examples. Um, this was using soft pastels, and I just did a gesso uh, on top of it just to kind of get the idea. I did dry and wet. Now be mindful, if you, you are using a dry sub, you know, um, medium, that this will continue to blend and make marks as, unless you put a fixative over the top. This has uh, been mixed with water, so it's not going to smear or smudge. So there are soft pastels. And here's one where I used um, Derivan liquid pencil, which is a very unique, um, it's like pencil lead, I guess, in, in different shades. And I've, I did a, a portrait in that, and then I swatched it out, and I also used some titanium white paint. So that was kind of fun to do uh, an image just using specific colors and then swatch it on the other side. So that was kind of good, too. This is... Um, it, it kind of gets that gray, the gray tones in, which I absolutely love. So uh, in this other book, I have a few more examples. Let's see, here's one right here. This was a, a set of Neocolor um, 2, which is water soluble. So I did add some water to it, so it's not gonna come up, but these are all the different colors. And I can tell you just by looking at this, the colors that I'm drawn to and the colors that I'm not drawn to. And I'm sure you can too. Just by looking at this, I'm sure you're saying, you know, I love this kind of um, fuchsia magenta, and I can look at it and say, I love <laughs> this dull grungy green uh, or the yellow ochre type of color. So the nice thing about putting it all out is that you can see the colors. They, they're going to pop out to you, the colors that you like and you don't like. Also, 
if you put two colors next to each other, suddenly I might like this pink given next to this green because whereas on its own, I may not be attracted to that. So there is also something about putting two colors uh, dull next to a bright, you know, the contrast can make things interesting. Now on this page, I did not put white gesso, but clear gesso so that the book text is coming through. So those, that's a, you know, a choice you can make. Now I will say when you do that, you're not gonna get the same reaction in terms of you know, the vibrancy of the color necessarily. You might, it might not, like as if you were doing it on a white sheet. It's a little bit different. So, and then one more. So like this one, I put white gesso down and this, these are Faber-Castell gelatos and they also are water soluble and I added some water to them. Now, you can see some of these colors are really bright. Now normally I wouldn't be drawn to this bright orange, but I think it is actually very, once I see it on here, I'm like, I actually like that. And I could see that with a green or a black um, or the yellow ochre again. So, you know, sometimes seeing the colors out gives you a perspective that you wouldn't. Cause I often don't, I won't reach for those colors because I think I don't necessarily like them. But a lot of times I will use them as a, sorry about that noise. Uh, <laughs> they're doing some construction across the street. Um, I will, I will um, put them as an under layer and then I'll have those come up. But if I don't, if, when I swatch them, it just gives me a great um, a visual and I can refer back to that. And then I think I have one more for you to show in my art journal here. These were the Derwent ink tents and they also are water soluble. And I did dry on the one side and then I added water on this side. And it kind of shows, you can use them both ways. If you leave them dry, you will need to put a fixative because they will smear. You can see they're smearing a little bit there. So I probably did not put a fixative on here. But it also gives you a sense of what the colors look like in two different, in two different formats. So I hope that gives you a great idea of where to start and what kind of, um, now this is not, I haven't even, I'm not even showing you paints swatches at this point. We're just doing kind of dry media, I guess. Something like, you know, markers, pencils would be of a similar, uh, of a similar nature. So no paint this in this round, but a lot of these materials can act as paint if you act, if you uh, like watercolor, especially if you add water to them. Okay, I've showed you some examples and now I'm going to show you different substrates or pieces that you could use to um, use to make your color swatches. Obviously, you could use a, a book converted into an art journal, kind of like what I showed you earlier, a actual art journal or a sketchbook. Now, I will say if you use a sketchbook and you add water to it, because the paper tends to be a little bit thinner, you might get some wrinkling. And if that doesn't bother you, then it's no problem. Uh, even when you apply gesso, it's still, it's, it's, it's just a lighter weight paper meant for more dry materials than wet materials. So just something to be mindful of. Um, what I've done here is some examples of, I've taken a book paper and put white gesso on some sheets. So I'm gonna decide what I wanna do them on. This paper looks like there's nothing on it, but I actually have put a coat of clear gesso on it. It gives it a little bit of a grit and it will, um, the paint will not, or the materials we're gonna use will not absorb into it quite as um, quickly as it would if, if there was nothing on there. The other thing you could use is a piece of cardboard and I would highly suggest putting a gesso either, I put white gesso on just because I feel like if I were to use this, it would show up the paint the the, the paint or the um, material would show up better than if I just left it the craft color and put plain clear or clear gesso on it. So that's just something to think about. And then of course there's our trusty beloved uh, garbage sack that is craft colored, which is always, and this one has this cool texture here. I don't know how that happened, but, um, and again, I would definitely put a coat of gesso on there. Um, and it could be clear, but again, with a craft color, you might not get a, a good sense of your, your paint colors. So, or your material colors. Uh, so just something to think about as you're prepping your, or deciding which material you are going to use. So um, I think what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna show you real quick what I mean when I say um, add a coat of gesso. So just for those of you who may not know, it's pretty simple. So I have my gesso in, in its container. I'm gonna grab it real quick here. And I have a, my brush, which already, I guess it was sitting in the lid. And honestly, it's as simple as just kind of going over it. Now, if you want it to be um, opaque, and which means you know blocking all the text underneath, you could give it a couple coats. 
But for my purposes, typically I like to see that come through. I like to see all the different layers. So it's more about applying it so that the, um, the media and the water do not absorb into it to the same degree. It kind of sits more on top. And otherwise, you lose some of the, you know, the, the moisture will, will soak into the paper. So that's how quick and easy that is. So I'm going to think about which substrate I'm going to use for this demonstration, and I'll get right back to you. OK, I've made some decisions. I'm going to, I'm going to I've decided to use the um, book paper that has the white gesso on it. I think it'll be better for demonstration purposes. So, and then I've decided to continue to just use a dry medium and add some water to it. And maybe another time I will do out a swatch out with some uh, paint or maybe even you know, some color mixing to demonstrate that. So today I'm gonna do the Derwent charcoal and the Derwent graphite. Both are big, well I'll just show you. And this charcoal has been well used and well loved as you can see here. In fact, my black is almost gone. I think I do have another container of this, but black, this will work for today's purposes. And it is, basically charcoal in different colors. You know, obviously the black is your traditional charcoal. Then the graphite is also in extra large chunky pieces. And it is, uh, you know, graphite, obviously, pencil lead type in different um, gradations and different colors here. So we're gonna sample, we're gonna, you know, swatch these out and just give you the idea. And they, you know, obviously there's no right or wrong way to do this. and the fun, the fun part about it is it kind of gets you using supplies. Maybe you're like me and you enjoy buying supplies and then you set them aside and you're not really sure how to use them. So this is a great way to like, okay, let me go get that set of markers or inks or whatever and I'm just gonna swatch them all out and I'm gonna see what they actually look like because I bought them and I've never used them and I'm gonna see kind of how they move about. So I'm gonna use a little container of water and a paintbrush to move those around. But let's get let's start with the charcoals first. So I think I'll just kind of go in order down the row here. We'll just do, actually, maybe I'll set these aside. We'll do one at a time. And um, let's see, I'm gonna do them pretty big just to kind of get this the idea. And you know, charcoal does make a lot of dust. So you know, if, that's, if that bugs you, I, they are messy for sure. So now I'm gonna take some water and I'm going to just kind of show you what it looks like when you add when you add water to it. So it, it can be really cool. I probably made that a little big, but for the sake of demonstration, I think that's okay. So let's go into the next color. Um, this is more of a green. Uh, so that wasn't the smartest thing to do there. And that'll show you kind of what it looks like when it's mixed with water. So I just, I actually love these. Obviously you can see they're well loved. And this is a pinkish charcoal. And let's add some water to that. Maybe I'll just do four on this page. And then let's do, let's wait and do the black and white on the other. This is also kind of a deeper, um, a deeper purple. Did I say purple? I don't know what I said, deep charcoal, but this is kind of a pinkish, and this is a little bit more of like a purplish color. So really pretty. Just, I love these charcoals and how they look. Um, and you can obviously get them lighter and lighter. And they, um, they react kind of like a watercolor, although I'm not super skilled or savvy with watercolors for sure, but I do like the look and feel of the charcoal. It has that um, that kind of grungy undertone that I just, I really love. So I'm going to sample out the white and the black on this piece of paper because obviously I ran out of room. Um, and obviously black is going to be black, which is really, you know, dark, but it can get shaded down to gray the more water you add to it. And then the white, I don't even know if that will, this will show up, but let's, let's give it a shot. Well, mixed with the gray, it does show up, but that, was, that's, uh, that wasn't what I meant to do. Let's see if I can take that off with this paper towel and get this a little cleaner. Now, it's, it's probably not going to show up too much anyway. I'm trying to pull down, but just um, it still turned a little gray, but I guess you can't use black and then use white. Okay, so that is our Derwent Extra Large Charcoal Chunks. So now let's move into our um, graphite 
the Durant graphite chunks. And, do, and I'll do those a little bit smaller so we can fit all six on the same page. So this one is like a brownish kind of golden brown. I'm sure they have proper names. It's really pretty. Yeah, you can see I love I love these I love these grungy colors. Here's the green. And just using these right now, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I have not I don't haven't used my my uh, my graphite blocks in a while, and they're so I, they're so cool. I love I'm loving them. So this is a reason, you know. You, sometimes it's good just to take stuff out because, and look at this blue. Oh my gosh, um, because it'll remind you of materials that maybe you haven't used and that you love. And you know, I think I mentioned I'm really drawn to these kind of kind of more grungy colors. So obviously, I'm swatching things that have the under color is like gray, the under color is, you know, black or whatever. So these are beautiful. This actually looks very similar to the charcoal kind of pinkish purplish color. Okay, two more. This is your traditional gray it looks like, which you would think a graphite would be. Okay, and then one more. This might be a little bit darker color, yeah. Wow, yeah. Oh, those are beautiful. Uh, you know, so I just am reminded of the fact that you can have materials on hand. They're they're sitting literally on my desk most of the time and open even. And I have not used them in a while. And these are just this is just a lovely color palette. So anyway, I hope that you will take some time, swatch your materials that you maybe you haven't used in a while, and just see what you can you can come up with and find. You know, you might be surprised at um, what you have on hand and the colors that you're really drawn to. Wow, you know, like I'm really, it's I'm being, I'm right now being, I'm very inspired to go make something with uh, my charcoal blocks and my graphite blocks. So I hope you um, take your materials, swatch them out, find your colors, and go do something super creative and super fun.